Good morning, delightful ones. Good morning. The title to today's lecture may not fit you right now, but if you keep wasting your time, I guarantee you it will fit you. Oh my God! I forgot to live my life! I don't think any of us really seeks to waste our lives. It seems to just happen. And in this, awareness is a key. Becoming aware of awareness is like an awakening to something that, after you start getting it, seems so obvious. But if you're not there and you're wasting time, then anything that comes along, you, you, you might find yourself saying, hey, wait a minute, why should I make a change here? We've always done it this way. And perhaps that's the most dangerous phrase in our language. We've always done it this way. You see, one thing about life that will become crystal clear is it's never the same. It is never the same. We look for sameness, and in that, we do ourselves a big disservice. So let's consider some of the things here that may be contributing to this that you can become aware of and make a shift. If you worry too much and you tend to dwell on the past, Okay, I'm talking to another audience. <laughs> you may be unhealthy in mind. Possibility. If you never exercise, and you don't eat healthy food, and you don't really moderate your unhealthy food, you might be unhealthy in body. If you never practice mindfulness or meditation, and you never embrace nature, or solitude, you might be unhealthy in soul. First and foremost, let's start out here right from the get-go. In order to have a solid foundation in which to live a meaningful life, get yourself healthy. It's something that you've got the time to do, and everything that we've mentioned here lies within the realm of possibility. So one of the first things you want to do is look and see how much negative thinking do I actually engage in? And if I do, how can I shift that? And what am I going to replace it with? Some of us often feel stumped when we first look at our lives and start feeling like, oh my God, I'm wasting my life. My life is running away from me. We look at it and we think, oh, how can I possibly change here? William James stated it this way, and I think it's, it's pretty simple. The greatest weapon against stress, which if you look, you're going to see worry, dwelling in the past, as well as the other activities that I mentioned, <coughs> are definitely going to relate to it. The greatest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thought over another. But learning to do that may take practice. And you may need to take a practice that's already available and then begin to devote yourself to it. You see, you're not the first person to encounter the possibility of the fact that you're wasting your life. Many others have encountered it. And they have gone deep within themselves to discover solutions to it. So one of the clear things right off the get-go is, hey, it's about choice. And you have the ability to choose one thought over another. By the way, there's a wealth of joy to be saved in life. If you begin now, you might find that it starts you on a different path entirely. Uh, Mr. Emoto, in working with water and water crystals, definitely showed a connection between positive thinking 
and the effects that it has upon ourselves and our environment. And oh, by the way, you're not a speck in the universe. You are the universe in a speck. The whole universe in a speck. Now, here's another consideration. Sometimes it is that we want to take the path of least resistance. We don't really want to do anything in a disciplined manner. So therefore we start improvising and we get an idea and we just take it and we run with it only to find out that eventually somewhere along the way we get to the place of recognizing hey, others found that through discipline there is true liberation. And you might find yourself going back to it and saying, okay, I tried this, I tried that, after all it's my path to try it and I need to become more disciplined. So sometimes what it is is you just don't challenge yourself enough. You want it to be your way right away. You don't want to have to wait for it. You don't want to have to follow the advice of someone else that is given to help you help yourself. So sometimes it's not the path which is the difficulty. It is the difficulty which is the path. If you never leave your comfort zone, you never travel. You always have a reason or, or an excuse for not trying something new. You may very well be wasting your life. Does anybody have money for tickets? <laughs> tickets to go. Tickets to travel. Tickets to get out of the rut. The universe is an amazing place. Stretch your comfort zone until you're bursting with fear and trepidation. <laughs> <laughs> and then move back to your safe zone. And heal. And then do it over again. <laughs> Keep working with yourself in this way. Keep stretching that comfort zone. Treat fear as an ally in this respect. Open yourself up so that eventually what happens is your heart says, Wow! <laughs> You're letting yourself experience something beyond what you were so programmed and so conditioned to believe that was all that was available to you. Now here's the next thing that I think some people have a little difficulty with, and yet you hear people saying all the time, I'm my own boss. <laughs> I'm my own boss. I don't let anybody else tell me what to do. I'm my own boss, and I like being my own boss. <laughs> How much do you let other people tell you how to live your life? It's part of our programming, you know. It really is. So, of course, I'm going to throw in there question authority. Even this that I'm saying to you today, question it. You're always your own boss, even when you're giving your power away to others. You can always take it back. Here's a nice little interesting insert. You're personally responsible for becoming more ethical than the society you grew up in. You're personally responsible for that, by the way. If you take advantage of others, and you know that you're taking advantage of others, and you know that it is going to be costly to them, and you go ahead and do it, well, what kind of ethics are you living there? You can justify it, you can rationalize it, but when it comes right down to it, there is that which is operative in us that gives us a clear message of whether we are being ethical in our endeavors or not. What about worthiness? Oh, <laughs> doesn't that just <laughs> do this to worthiness when you find yourself not living? in harmony with who you believe, who you know you are. 
So we're talking about being worthy. What if you don't feel worthy? Kiss it off? A lot of people do. They say, well, how can I be worthy when I don't feel worthy? Well, how about acting like it? <laughs> how about acting worthy? You see, if you act something long enough and you put enough energy into it, you're going to get to the place to where you feel worthy and it won't be an act anymore. It will be something that you have waked up to because you started living in harmony with that which resonates and reveals itself, confirms itself as worthiness. You feel good about you being you. Have fun with it. By the way, you know, acting worthy, it also is a choice. It really is. That's all it is. Eventually, you're going to feel it. And it's like playing a game of reverse psychology with the, uh, the inner fool. Does anybody know anything about the inner fool? That's something that you often see manifesting in someone else. <laughs> So, if you play the game of reverse psychology with the inner fool that's telling you you're unworthy, you hoodwink it into coming to a place of worthiness. And then, of course, here's the other thing that all of us grapple with, and that's because of the society, the culture that we're in, and how it's geared to operate. You spend too much time worrying about money. Money. I don't have enough. I can't get enough. Enough is never enough. When the fact of the matter is, money is just a tool, you see. And the one thing that's going to trump this illusion is heart. When you begin to open up to and consider what your heart is to you and what your heart has to say to you, about you, through you, about life, you're going to realize that you have then tapped into your inner place of true prosperity. Because your heart is going to give you that realization that you have everything you need. There's nothing you could ever, ever, ever not have access to unless you refuse it. But just in case, you know, you look at others and you see them with their money and all of that which goes with that show. Bertrand Russell had a very important thing to say about that. He said, hey, listen. Don't be envious of those who live in a fool's paradise. For only a fool will think that is happiness. I remember one time in the early years of starting this work, didn't have a lot of money and needed money. And money was coming, but of course, it wasn't coming as fast or as much until I encountered someone who said, you are a gifted psychic. I could use someone like you. As a matter of fact, I'll be willing to pay you and then they ran off a sum, if I would do their bidding, and in essence, be their private medium. To which I said, hey, thanks, but no thanks. You may edit this, but I'm off to no end. But it also confirmed to me that if I am willing to listen and follow the guidance of spirit in my life, 
I will be taken care of regardless of who agrees or disagrees with me. And if there, there is a disagreement, fine. I'm not here to convince you that my way is to become your way. I'm only here to allow what flows through me to stimulate you to come to a place of improving your life. Now, if you can get that, then you have something that you can work with that will help you help yourself. You'll get to that place where you'll stop wasting time. You'll get to that place where you choose to be positive. You'll realize, I'm not a speck. And I am my own boss and I choose to be that. And I will live in a way to where I feel good about me, which translates into, I live what I believe is worthy of being lived. So that you come to a place of experiencing a developing heart-centered awareness that knows no end so far as where you can go and where you will go. So, this is a message for those of you who have ears to hear. This is a message for those of you who have eyes to see. And if you don't, not a problem. Thank you. For more information about the Metaphysical Church of Enlightenment or the Rodin Foundation, please go to our website at www.rodin.org. If you have been inspired by the revelations shared in these podcasts, please donate to the Rodin Foundation's ongoing efforts to help others help themselves at www.rodin.org.